I'm going to be completely honest here and let you know that I was hoping not to have to make this video, but out of an abundance of caution, I did carry on my research and development anyway. Um, today, as of shooting this video, we have almost 6 million cases of COVID in the U.S. and 23 million cases worldwide. Um, no signs of slowing down and it really feels like we're going to be in this struggle for a while. So, why am I doing this? Um, not doing this for the money, obviously, because I'm not getting any. Uh, while I could use the money, like my direct competitors of this video who have raised over $10 million in crowdfunding um, for things that may actually never be <laughs> de delivered in, in the end. Um, I just want this nightmare to be over ASAP, so if my little experiments can save some time, awesome. But just know that we're this video is pretty much trying to disrupt a $10 million industry that should never exist anyway. You shouldn't be trying to profit off of the death and destruction of people, but that's just my philosophy. Who should be... Um, playing with these ideas it should be people who are trying to maximize their personal protection but may not have a 3d printer or very much equipment or tools or experience or skills necessary to um, create a professionally made product um, but also this is for safety geeks so remember safety is my top priority so with all that said um, I present you the Infinite N95 version 3.0. Um, like the competitors I mentioned um, and, the pre and in the previous video, um, we're actually going to be using the power of UV, um, ultraviolet light, to help sterilize the air we breathe. This is it right here. Okay. Um, What is ultraviolet? It's a range of wavelengths of light that is actually invisible to the human eye, but very effective at deactivating DNA of microbes, bacteria, viruses, etc. Um, it's definitely not a toy. So when I shine this directly at the camera, I was not shining it at my eyes. Do not shine it into your eyes or your skin directly because you can suffer serious injury. Um, it's been used in the medical field for decades for sterilization purposes and modern technology has now put it into this tiny accessible package um, to kill viruses it needs to be in the UVC spectrum which is something you thankfully can't get from actual sunlight. Um, because we have the ozone to protect us from it. Um, but it also needs to contact anything that you want to um, sterilize in what's called the line of sight to be able to be effective. There's lots of studies and stuff. You can Google them. I'll try to link some in the, comment, uh, the comments below as well. Um, this particular unit, as you can see, um, from this really quick test we did is the real deal um, uh, I got this unit off of eBay this is the unit itself I got this off of eBay um, the purple lights that you saw are actually just um, peripheral LEDs the real UVC is right there in the middle um, I'll put that link in the description below as well. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so for this adaptation of your um, Infinite N95, you're going to need your Infinite N95. Um, if you haven't um, assembled yours already or if you haven't made one yet, um, of course, I'll put it in the links below, as I keep saying. Um, but you could also just go to the directly to the domain, which is eight 
N95.com. Okay. You also need a UVC unit, an L U uh, LED UVC. Okay. This is really meant to plug into the back of your phone, which is a kind of a weird um, design, in my opinion, but um, I've adapted it to use a power bank, which you also need. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Like, there's so many different power banks on the market. Um, mainly, I was going for size and weight so that you wouldn't have some giant thing hanging off the top of your helmet or your your uh, Infinite N95 mask. Um, you will also need um, some Velcro. This is regular loop fastener. You can get anywhere pretty much. Um, you also need something similar or um, Sugru or something similar um, this is basically moldable glue which you can use as clay and I'll show you what it's for in just a moment okay so the basic idea is we are putting this together oh one more thing you will probably need um, with your power bank, you're going to have to have the appropriate connections um, to connect it to this uh, UVC unit. So here I have a female to female connector. So I connect it in there, and then that's already connected to the magnetic power bank connector, which is this right here. And then you just connect it in there. And that's why I chose this specific power bank, because it's actually pretty cool and easy to use. Um, all right, so definitely look that up. I'll put some links to help you get started. Um, but yeah, so the basic idea is we are, let's say this is the um, the T-ball for our Infinite ND5. We are mounting this UVC unit in here so that all the air that passes into the nozzle comes in direct contact with the UVC light. Okay. Uh, we're doing this in a modular way so that um, you can take it off or put it on whenever. Um, but one thing I do want to address is that if you keep this on, if you keep this UVC unit on for too long and you're inhaling it, there is a chance that you will start inhaling ozone. So really, um, the, the method that I use is really easy to turn on and off at any time. So um, the realistic use of this would be um, when you're gonna, when you know you're gonna enter a crowded area, um, and you don't have very much air flow in that area, like there's no wind or it's an enclosed area, you would turn it on uh, just to give you that extra protection. Um, and once you're out of that area, you would turn it off. Okay. Um, all right. So, with all that said, <laughs> I know it's taken a long time to get here, but first you're going to want to gauge the position of the UVC unit. Oh, also, I've lined some of the um, plastic parts of the nozzle with some aluminum foil here which for one it will protect the plastic from degrading if you end up using this quite often um, and two aluminum foil um, is one of the best um, reflectors of UVC light because if you look it up it's UVC light is pretty tricky it, it doesn't really pass through 
materials very easily like it won't pass through glass as easy as one might imagine and it also doesn't reflect very easily so a mirror surface wouldn't really do very much um, it really depends on the actual material used to reflect or diffuse um, the wavelength okay so first thing you want to do is gauge the position of the UVC in relation to your T-ball and you want to mark that off however you however you like um, then what you would want to do is secure the UVC so what I do is I use um, the velcro cut a piece of velcro off And then you would want to secure the power bank to the mask. Make sure that it works. You see? Okay. Mine you can turn off with this little button here. It's pretty cool. And now that that's positioned, position there see that okay now you take your sugru and you create a seal because right here you're gonna have an open area for air to just pass straight through and you might not be able to get a good seal with your um, filter material around that and rubber banding it down you won't be able to get a good seal without the use of this sugru stuff so you want to knead that in your hand a little bit and then turn that off and then cut it in half basically as best as possible and now put it on either side here so that you can mold kind of like a cradle around the unit now if you want to keep it modular you don't want to completely seal the unit inside um, but basically you're just trying to make something that will allow the rubber band to create a good seal. Okay, so there's no, there's going to be no open space when you um, tie it down with the rubber band. Okay. Now that stuff takes about 24 hours to dry, so you have, you have a good amount of time to just play with it and make it nice and smooth so that there's no, there's no, um, air leaks. Okay. I may have used too much, but I mean, you could always pull some off if you feel like it's too much. Okay, just make sure that it's nice and smooth so that when you try to secure 
your infant N95, um, you have a nice flat um, surface to wrap the rubber band around. Okay, so now there you go. Now that that's done, we can reassemble our infinite N95. Okay, see? So, now, now that's a tight seal, see? Tightly sealed, and just to show you how it works, you would turn it on like that. And now, anything that could possibly pass through your um, filter material that you use for your Infinite N95 will have to meet um, the UVC light. Um, so the idea is that the air that just naturally passes through here um, we'll have contact with the UVC light um, before you go ahead and breathe it in. Okay, so now I cover that so that there's no chance of um, well, you don't really have to cover it, but I usually just cover this with an extra layer of fabric so it doesn't look like I have some <laughs> some paper towel wrapped around my head um, so yeah it usually would look something like this okay like that all right and that would be my mask okay and the cool thing about this particular design of power bank is that when you're ready to turn it off you could either use the button or you could just pull it off because <laughs> it's got this magnet connection which is really um, really convenient actually so all right and uh, that's pretty much it but let me give you a test a couple tests actually so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put this on So that was the oxygen saturation test with the mask on. Um, and it shows you that I've got full oxygen saturation and I have almost zero um, labor of breath. So yeah, that's um, Infinite N95 version 3.0. You know what, I'm gonna do one more test here. Um, just to alleviate one more possible question, which is how much is all this stuff weighing um, this extra stuff? Like, how, like, what am I putting on my head? So here's the, the power bank. And you could probably imagine that the um, the 
the UVC unit itself is super light. So you're adding one ounce <laughs> of total weight to the, um, the mask. I keep calling it a helmet, but it's a mask. Um, and yeah, so one thing I want to tell you is that you do want to make sure that your Sugru dries fully because this right here you could see that it was creating a seal but it was also still wet so I do have to remold this so before you reassemble everything make sure that your seal is dry so that um, it doesn't like deform when you put everything together okay let me make sure that all of the points that I wanted to cover have been covered all right so remember I'm just a regular dude I can spend my time if I can spend my time coming up with these things so can anyone else that's why this project is open source I hope to get some feedback in the comments um, I'll include all the relevant relevant links in the description below so please check them out um, and definitely please like and subscribe I have a lot more planned um, for all the subsequent versions all the way up to version 7 so version 4 is actually fully complete um, and I'll be filming that as soon as possible shout out to the Mad Mask Brigade um, and I'll be shooting version the next version of the um, tear gas protection pretty soon probably next week um, because I do think I have all the components necessary and again thanks for watching please share so we can get past this really scary chapter in our history and again please subscribe to keep up to date on all the newest developments sorry for such a long video but it was 10 million dollars worth of um, disruption <laughs> so um, please be safe out there and um, that's it have a good one